Now, for those of you watching my Write a Musical With Me series, you might have noticed it's been a little while since my last update. And yes, I have been working on it. So in this video, I'm finally gonna reveal the concept of my musical, where I'm headed next, and look at a couple of the challenges that you might relate to. Hi, I'm Scott, watching Inside Musicals, the channel for all things musical theater. Now, the great thing about doing everything yourself, being writer, composer, lyricist, is that you make all the decisions. But without a collaborator to bounce off, you have absolutely no objectivity, so it's easy to get lost. You know, it's one thing to have a feel for your story, but it's another thing to make it concrete with scenes and characters that can be played by actors and communicated on the stage. And as I always say, an idea is not a thing till it's a thing. And now I feel like it's just about a thing. I know, profound. You're welcome. So since that last update, I've written that two-page synopsis and rewritten it multiple times. Because on the one hand, I want the show to have some emotional depth, but I also want it to have a sense of fun, so it's worth sharing on YouTube. So with the help of some of those story theories I mentioned in the last video, I've explored the show from different directions. I've discovered new thematic layers. I feel like I understand my characters more clearly. And while I'm confident in the underlying concept, now I'm kind of drowning in the baggage of each of those drafts. So to clarify the idea, at least in my own mind, I've been pitching the show to a few trusted friends. Because sometimes just hearing it out loud helps you hear how it's coming across. And I'm not so much asking them for feedback, although you could. I'm just noticing how it lands, what they respond to, what excites them, what makes the penny drop, and importantly, what leaves them bored. And you know what I learned? So, it's uh, a musical for the stage. So the, the, oh, where are we going? But of course, the, oh, I'm talking in circles now. There's, uh, I've probably confused the issue a bit. So, um, 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 and is that any clearer? Now I've lost it. What is the show about? What the, <laughs> what the hell is this show about? I know, about? I know exactly. <laughs> I'm really bad at pitching, or at least I'm practiced, because I'm over explaining. Too much plot, too much backstory. So I think the key is simplicity, uh, conveying the essence of the idea without getting bogged down in the detail. I highly recommend it as an exercise. So now, my trusted friends, I'm gonna pitch my story to you. So it's a workplace comedy set backstage of a long-running beloved children's pantomime called A Very Naughty Fanny, and echoes the style of a famous author of the 1940s. But the show itself is set in the present day, the pantomime is set in the 1940s, and it's about to celebrate its 35th year on the stage. Now, the lead characters in the pantomime are three children and a dog, originally cast as 20-something actors 35 years ago, but then still played by those same actors, now in their 50s, still playing children and a dog. But backstage, they can barely stand the sight of each other. They're very professional on stage, backstage, there's not much going on because of the history between them. And their uneasy working relationship is put to the test when the much younger actors, who now play the parents and townsfolk in the pantomime, decide it would be more age appropriate if they played the lead roles of the children and the dog. But at the same time, they're uncomfortable with the irreverent humor of the pantomime. They're sensitive to what they perceive as a sexualized workplace because the history that these older characters have between them. And they want to rewrite the whole thing to be more politically correct. So on the surface, it's a simple turf war. The show is about this little theatre family and can they heal their differences. Thematically, it's an argument between experience and youth and whether that older cast can put aside their personal differences to fight for the roles they've honed over decades and remain relevant in them. And so they wrote it, they're the authors. They're the authors, so, so they, they have ownership so, yeah. of this thing. Or whether they forfeit to a younger, sexier cast who don't really care about the show, but want to shine in the glory of those roles on the 35th anniversary. Now I've chosen a theatre setting for the show, not just because it's a world that I understand, but because it's a pressure cooker environment. It's an unusual workplace where you're obligated to work intimately with your peers, both physically and emotionally. And so it amplifies issues of personal space, gender identity, ageism, appearance, in a changing world that we're all grappling with. And interspersing all the backstage shenanigans are large chunks of this outrageous pantomime that contrasts the values of the 1940s with a contemporary sensibility. Okay, so there's the pitch. How am I doing? Is it 
clear? Is it interesting? Does it feel like you want to know how it ends? Does it feel fun, at least? Now, I've been feeling like it's taken me a long time to get to this point, and I'll come back to that. But between the outline and the pitching now, I feel like I'm, I'm ready to move forward with the script. Yay! And I don't want to be that guy that makes out like, oh, yeah, it's all plain sailing, and if you know this one tip, it'll all fall into place, because there are always challenges. And I want to be upfront with that, because maybe you relate to them. And the first one is purely practical, and I've kind of been vacillating with it, and that is the size of the cast. Because I need to keep it small so I can afford to do a reading or a stage reading or a workshop even. So I've settled on a cast of nine, and even that might be considered large by off-Broadway standards. So I have four middle-aged actors playing the children and the dog in the pantomime. I have four younger actors playing secondary characters in the pantomime, additional characters throughout the show, and possibly the older actors in flashback. Plus, I have a theatre owner who hates actors and has to juggle all of these personalities. But my question is, do I really need the flashbacks? And if not, do I need all four of those younger actors? In fact, do I need any of them? Or can a story be told purely from the perspective of the older actors? I mean, maybe it's all set just in their dressing room and everything else happens off stage. And the truth is, I probably can't really know until I write it. I think I have to flesh out the story first, understand what it is, and then work out how I realise that for the stage. That's just logistics. But I do need to keep that cast size in mind, because it's not just a creative decision, it's a financial one. The second issue is one of self-doubt. And strangely, it's not doubt in my ability, but doubt in whether I have anything worth saying. Because like it or not, every worthwhile story has a point to make. In Beauty and the Beast, we learn that Belle's compassion is a good thing. In Gypsy, we understand that parents should not live their lives through their children. In Les Mis, we realise that a man's not judged by a single moment in time, but by the sum of his actions. And all of those things are worthwhile saying, but I keep asking myself, what do I possibly have to say that hasn't been said before? So for now, I'm leaning into the pain of the main character, which we haven't touched on yet. But I think that's the emotional heart of the story, and I think that's worth telling. And look, maybe it doesn't matter if it's been said before, as long as it's worth saying, it bears repeating, and it feels fresh in the telling. I don't know. How do you grapple with these kinds of questions? I think the next task is really just to write. I can always rewrite later. And the third challenge is the frustration of taking longer than I would like to get here. Uh, this musical is not funded, it's not commissioned, so by the time I do the things that pay the bills, meet my domestic responsibilities, make these YouTube videos that are also not generating an income at this point, I write in my spare time. And seriously, <laughs> who has time to spare these days? Now, I do use a digital calendar, so every day I know when I wake up, exercise, eat, when I have paid work, unpaid work, recurring tasks, when I write, edit, film, YouTube videos. Now, the one thing that's not in there, the musical. So right now, I just need to schedule dedicated time to the musical, so that every week, no matter what else is happening, I know those hours are spoken for. Otherwise, it just keeps getting pushed back. And if you're like me and you work seven days a week, it's just so easy to let things slide particularly if there's no immediate payoff. So how do you organise your time? Should I do a video on productivity for freelancers? What do you think? And if you're someone who pitches ideas in whatever industry, how do you get better at it? But once again, thank you so much for watching. Your support makes all the difference. I love you. Get out there and be brilliant.